Hello, Elisabeth Bolun. Hello, Rasef Sainadin. So it's been 48 hours since we transferred the cows from the first paddock of the second field to the second paddock. We're sitting there happily. They haven't really noticed that yes, noticed us yet. And here we just thought we would look at the first field for a little bit. So it's now Monday the 31st of July and it's 8.15 in the evening. Yeah. So this has been empty for some time now. Yeah, about and eight days or so. Yeah. And the clover and the herbs are quite fast to come here. Some grass also. But I will say, because I know the name's more in Swedish, so we have a lot of dug copa, a lot of the white clover, and a lot of the yarrow are coming with little leaves, and some of the grasses. Yeah. And, yeah. And inside here, the enclosure where they spent the first 24-ish hours. Yeah, the enclosure where they did a lot of stampede, but then yeah. for, for 24 hours, right? And then they moved out exactly. and hardly went back in. It's the same species composition, it's just the grasses have gotten a lot further in here. That's yeah. the main difference, I would say. Huh. So the grasses are reaching 10 centimeters, many of them. Yeah. Much similar composition. Because yeah. I think they pooped so much in here in those 24 hours that they yeah. didn't really want to eat he in here yeah. after that. So it was left alone for longer. Yeah. So it's interesting. So we've ordered a drone now with the video. It should come in a week. It'd be interesting to do these recordings uh, automatically instead of us walking through all the time. But this is fun though. And we see Although here, this time both of us have gum boots. Yeah. And we see here also that they really do not like uh, birch. I mean, they avoided these even though they were really hungry, like, hungry running out of good food. Um, yeah. So the interesting thing is that the sort of, you know, the how they've shat everywhere. Yeah. It's a. Uh, I'm super curious about how they're doing it, you know, should <laughs> see if it's actually uh, the null hypothesis is that it's some kind of a boson process, but uh, maybe we'll see. I think you would get uh, over dispersion. It would aggregate where they spend a lot of time and where they... Yeah. Yeah. And then so it would be randomly distributed, but yeah. it would be um, yeah. more... Yeah, we can use our when they, where they yeah, spend more time. Yeah, so we can test that very tightly using the distance between the two watering buckets. This is hot. Should we walk through the field or? Yeah, we could. Yeah. Well, although yesterday we walked along the thing, so it'll be good to get an yeah. idea of the same okay. vegetation. So. Yeah. This is the first. Because also I'm afraid that when we fly the drone, it may be easier to fly it outside the fence. Yeah. Because I don't know how the cows will react to it. And the drone I got, unfortunately, the really nice American-made one, where you can pre-program the paths and stuff but that can avoid collision. That is unfortunately not available in stock. So we're getting something else that they to sort of manually do. Oh, we see this one they didn't eat at all, actually. It's Eljot in Swedish. Huh. That's also a medicinal plant with salicylic acid. So my guess now is... Because I know two plants with salicylic acid and yeah. they seem to avoid both of them. Oh, huh. interesting. Well, maybe they save that for when they have a headache because that's what you have in aspirin. Well, I don't know. We'll cows. see. <laughs> well, cows can get headache. It's anti-inflammatory. Okay. Yeah. So what, do you remember the name of the author who wrote the book about animals? How they uh, Fred are Provenza, Nourishment. Huh? Very, very, very good book. Fred Provenza. Highly recommend. Uh, I'm planning to read it this winter. So what has happened here? It's basically very similar, right? Yeah, but, uh, they trampled a lot of the long grass here and yeah. we kept them a bit shorter. So they didn't... A lot of the trampled stuff just stayed trampled instead of eventually getting eaten. That's the main difference, I guess. So now they are all very curious, or most of them. So, 
I guess it's been 48 hours now since yeah, they moved from precisely. the first paddock and field two to the second triangular paddock and field two. We had some heavy rain today and then some intermittent sun. Yeah, still you immediately notice that some yarrow is still untouched. Yeah. Uh, the leaves of the midsummer blooms there. Mm. They also don't seem to like. Mm. At least for 48 hours. Yeah. They did definitely eat all of that in the first field where yeah, they were yeah. really. Definitely. Crazy. Hello. Oh, I scared her. Oh, she's so scary. Come. Hey, Okay, she you looks. Oh, the red clover. They so can't see, I think. And it's oh, too it's small. too little. Because they can only see on the sides. Yeah. Hey, good man. Hey, it's good. Yeah. Oh, more peak. Somebody is peeing. Two, five, six, seven. There is 0569, the one that was ducking under the fence, right? Yeah. Well, now she's not. Nope. So yeah, it doesn't look like they have tried to reach outside much. On no, the there's other still side. plenty here. Somebody's pooping. We got mm -hmm. all of the bodily fluids moving, it seems. I, I guess is that maybe that's how they say, hey, look, yeah. we're pooing and peeing and pooping. No. I mean, when it's such a limited paddock, it also so, becomes quite a lot of poop quite fast because yeah. they don't eat where they are pooped, right? Yeah, but so, like compared to yesterday, there's still yarrow flowers left. Yeah, yeah. What else was left yesterday? Now it's much harder to see after 48 hours. Yeah, it's more trampling. Okay. On top of the pee. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. So, my impression is that now they just kind of eat whatever is left, but they still ab avoid yarrow. Yeah, just let's walk to the end so we have yeah. a video of the whole yeah. edge of the fence. Yeah. yeah I'm not sure yeah. when we fly the drones, I'm not sure how, yeah, when we will lose track. I guess this is also a theory, I guess now when it's wet and they step in their own poop and smear it. Here there's a lot less poop yeah. it seems, but it's difficult. Yeah. Because if the poop gets smeared by them walking around, more parts become inedible quicker, yeah. right? Yeah. They've taken off the, the flowers, see? Uh -huh. And they had finished flowering, so they were starting to make seeds, I think. Yeah. They've nipped those up off very precisely and left the stems and the uh, That's leaves. That's a good observation, yeah. yeah. They have, haven't they? Interesting. Whereas the daisies, you see, they all have the seed capsules at the top. They yeah. have not bitten off those seed capsules at all. Yeah. They have tiny, tiny, tiny seeds, I know. So maybe there's not much. Okay, let's try to make it to the edge of the field in another 25 seconds. Okay. We have plenty of time. Let's run, uh, run uh, with Rosa, <laughs> see who comes there first. No? <laughs> <laughs> Are they all still there? Okay. So anyway, the plant maps is what I try to, what we're trying to figure out how to prototype. 
something to map the individual plants. Let's see. This seems to be still holding up, okay? Yeah. Okay. I guess you'll be here for a couple more days, girls. And then look, it's quite lush there. Yeah. Unfortunately, the drone will only arrive like on Saturday. Yeah. Well, we'll have to do it at the other paddock.